Hi folks, we're going to do a quick show through on your 2020 40 IP. We're going to start off on the driver's side, front compartment. Um, it's all your spider control breakers. If those breakers are popped out an inch to a half inch on the white part, it means there's no power going to that. You open up your cover on the snap lids. like that and you should be able to push the button in and it should stay in and then you go back to normal usage also also in this compartment you have a air fitting line over on the right hand side and a curly Q hose along with all that over here you have more red dots that's all for uh, service end only also on the door, you have a fuse layout and all your inputs and what it does. In these little boxes behind here, there are ATC fuses. They're gonna be a mini ATC, ATC fuse. All you gotta do to remove this cover is squish the tabs. There's a pull tab right here. That releases the front hood for the generator. And we'll make our way around. In this compartment, you have your battery tray, which is slideable, comes out. This is your hydraulic pump. This runs your levelers, your hydraulic levelers, and your hydraulic slides. Oops, um, this also comes out on a tray to uh, be able to check the fluid in the reservoir, which is in the back. And that should be able to push back in like that basement compartment and your uh, storage trays all in here over here is another part of your spider control system it's your 1 through 12 resettable breakers if they stick out push them back in they'll reset also on here your red one is your house battery disconnect if you leave it, or if you're storing it for a long time with no power to it, turn that off and this lever, or this lever off and then also turn this one off. This is your inverter disconnect. And then when you go to recamp, turn them both back on and you'll have lights that light up on the inverter over here. And the cargo lights will come on. Uh, very simple. So the storage trays lift up on the lever. They pull out and then they launch it yes. And your four storage door or storage compartment door, another side tray. Tiffin also gives you a sewer hose, um, a spare serpentine belt, and your central vac um, attachments. Okay, the fun one, your wet bay. This is where you do all your water hookups and your sewer discharge hookups. Your water hookups go off of your hose reel that can be hooked up to a uh, water supply on a pole for a campground or your home. And then you shoot the hose down through the little grommet there and run it out. Where it says fantastic, or yeah, fantastic flush, that flushes out your black tank from all the waste. Over here you have a lever that's a yellow handle with silver that will either fill the fresh tanks or run strictly off of city water. If you're dry camping, you go to your tank fill, you fill up your tank, and then you'll turn the pump on, which there's multiple switches in that inside the coach. Here you have your GFCI outlet for your wet bay with a resettable switch on the inside. Over here is your pump switch, water pump switch. Flip it up, red light comes on, pump comes on. Over here is your sea level gauges. You can check your batteries level, your fresh tank level, your gray tank level, your black tank level. <clears throat> um, outside font or shower right here works as you does in your as it does in your home. Down here is your sewer waste discharge. Your black handle is on the left hand side. Your black tank's on the left hand side. Your gray tank's on the right hand side. When you hook that up, always or pull the black level first and then rinse it out with the grays. Also down in behind that is you have a red handle. That's your fresh tank discharge.
Also over here, by your water pump, you have your aqua hot switch with a temperature thermistor inside the bay. This is your water pump. You also have a red PEX and a blue PEX. That is your low point drains. If you're going to store it for a long time, my recommendation is to open them up to drain all the water out of the system. This is your aqua hot system. This is your register heat and your hot water heat. It all goes into that aqua hot box and it works like a boiler. Um, you have your reservoir here. Always make sure it's in between cold and hot. And over here you have an LCD screen that will indicate if you have issues and what pump's running, what's on, what's not, when a, in, a, in operation. This storage compartment is your 50 amp short cord door with a reel. Um, Self-explanatory, little switch right here. Retract, extend. Um, with a cargo door light here. Also, on all the cargo door lights, there's three, three settings on the switches. One indicates on all times, two is the motion detector, and the third setting is off. Your death fluid is your diesel, ex diesel exhaust fluid. Make sure it's tapped off at all times and uh, also carry an extra two gallons with you on a long trip just in case it drops down and you cannot find some at a filling station. Okay, back here is your engine compartment. Um, most of it's all serviceable through a Cummins dealer. Uh, the stuff that you can check back here is your antifreeze level. It should always be in the sight glass about halfway full. This is your air filter indicator on how dirty it is. That should be replaced every couple of years as manufactured spec. Uh, this is a fuel filter. Then you have a, a water separator and a fuel filter down here. Over here is your power steering fluid. Um, always put in what the label says on it. Over here is your oil dipstick. And it'll check your oil levels. And if you have to add oil, down here should be 1540 Rotella. Up here is your transmission oil fill. Uh, okay, back here we have the rear passenger side storage compartment. It has a lot of stuff going on in here. Most of the stuff over here is all chassis oriented. Um, any flashing lights and so on, that's all sensors for the engine compartment and transmission. Um, to service it, it's more Cummins dealer only or a Tiffin dealer. Uh, some things some things to check for if you don't have power is reading the labels over here on this side and making sure these indicators are in the proper location. There is also fuses, uh, big ATC fuses such as this in between each compartment. Um, there's multiple other fuses and test points for service items only. Going over here, these are your chassis engine start batteries with a disconnect and all your main mega fuses are labeled. Um, also up in here, there's a plug for your black heater um, to be used in cold locations to warm up the engine before you start it. Another storage compartment for storage. Uh, right here you have your water for your airlines, discharges, and quick connects. This is if you wanna release all the air in the system if you're at a park for a long time. Also up here, these are your SwinTech modules. They control your rear two slides from going in and out. Um, when they work, you'll see a light flash when the slide is running out if somebody was on the inside. If there's ever an issue with a slide not coming out, come over here and have somebody run the slide out until it stops and it'll flash a red and green light and then do a multiple series of flashes up to nine. Then you're gonna have to take a magnifying glass and read that and it'll tell you what does what. If it's like a red flash, then nine flashes, it's usually per se a bad module or broken wire or so on. Up here, this is your customer supply air. This is your tank drain, your primary tank drain, your secondary tank drain. Another storage compartment, it's a big one. The only thing in this particular compartment is your 
surge guard protector. That is your transfer switch from switching from shore power to generator power. When you do plug it into shore power, you're going to hear a thud. That means it's working. It's a switch opening and closing. Okay, in this compartment door you have your fresh tank, your gray tank, your black tank. These green strips are all your sensors. It tells you which goes into your monitor panel to tell you how much fluid or liquids in each one. Um, right here you have your fresh tank fill and you can also fill it on the other side at the hose hookup. All the other plumbing stuff is vents and it goes discharges and so on. Um, well under warranty, if you have any issues with this, take it to a service center. Okay, this is access to your, the back side of your refrigerator and wiring. Um, the only time you should really have to be back here is there's a valve hooked up to the copper line. That's for your ice maker and water dispenser in your refrigerator. If your model happens to have that. All the other stuff is all wiring and so on. It's more for service accessibility. And this compartment is the back side to the storage compartments. Um, same as the other side, just on the passenger. These wires on the coaches on the doors are for your automated locks for your key fobs or off the touchpad. The only thing that they operate is from the rear axis forward. Once again, more storage in the storage trays. Um, they do also supply a GFCI protected outlet up above the storage tray if you needed to use that for a TV fan. So this compartment is for your outdoor freezer. It comes on a slide tray. You lift up the two knobs, you pull it out, such as this. Over on this side is your on and off, your set, your up and down for temperature. Which this is also plugged into 110 and 12 volts, so it'll run, operate and run on both. And on the inside, that's it. This is your touchpad locking system. You enter your four or six or four up to eight digit code to unlock it unlock the screen and then you'll indicate with lights on each one you can have a door lock and unlock a bay door lock and when you do use the bay door lock you'll hear it all click you can extend the awning the door awning from the switch and retract it you can turn on your porch light which is the one over here and then the door lights turns on the handle and the one above you can also turn on the road scare light. This bell looking thing is a doorbell. This is your front hook generator area. Once you want to release the latch from the inside the pull latch, you can come on out here, two fingers, lightly pull it out. Um, in here, the most of this stuff all up in here is all for service items only until you get to your generator. This is your onboard generator, your breaker here for on and off for power, your power button to start and prime, your hour meter, this is for your antifreeze level. To check that, there's a sight glass right here, it should be in between the halfway point minimum. Also, to check your oil on your generator, Unrelease that latch, pull this out, slow it down nicely. There's a dipstick right here. Pull the dipstick out, make sure it's in between the hash marks. If it's not, your oil fill level or your oil fill cap is right here. This here is your breaker, your or your breaker to run the whole coach off the generator. If there happens to be a surge through it or too much power is wanted and not enough power is put out, this breaker will turn just like your home breakers it'll go to off so if you're running a generator and you don't have lights or refrigerator on or your batteries are going dim make sure you open up the hood come on out and make sure that's on the on level once that goes on it'll go through and start recharging the batteries when you're going to close your hood 
front hood of your coach. Tiffin puts an emblem right dead center in the center. You take your palm of your hand right here and put a fingertip on top to latch it. That way the corners don't hit on the top and it doesn't get out of line. All right, we're inside your coach. What you should usually do is start your coach. Let it idle for a few seconds before you run your slides out. Also make sure your air brake is on, otherwise you'll start rolling. But once it's run, up and running, you go to the passenger driver's seat and you can run your slides out. I'll do the passenger seat first. The switches on the side of the seats are remotes, so there's no wires on the inside. Okay, after your front slides are open and your engine is still running and you want to open up the rear slides, you go to your touchscreen panel and along the bottom you find the little two boxes that look like square or rectangles. You push that and it operates this page icon to open up. Then you can hit extend and run it out. These are electric slide. Always hold your finger on extend until it's all the way out and then pause, or hold the switch for about two to three seconds. On this screen, if you have a front slide icon right down here and your front switches do not work, you can always go to hit that. It brings you to this caution, emergency uses only. It'll allow you to run the slide in and out. So you'd hit continue. And now you can run the passenger or the driver slide in and out to get in and out of your coach. Um, going back to your touchscreen system on your Tiffin. This is your home page. You can operate all of your lighting page from here, your aqua hot, your water pump, and this is your monitoring panel for your fresh, your gray, your black, and your diesel, flu diesel fuel. Over here, this is your temperature gauge all your thermostats it's all in one you also have your battery gauges for your chassis and your house it also explains over here on line one and line two of how much power is coming in if you're plugged in uh, anything less than 50 amps you should have only one line one line supplying power to the coach a 50 amp is two lines you can also run your generator start stop from here. You can also set up your inverter disable button from there and your AGS. With this system, it's very, very redundant. This is the home page, and we'll touch the same wording on all the little icons on the bottom. Going along the bottom, the first one's a light bulb. That's all your light switches to turn everything on and off. If it's lit up like that, it's on. If it's gray, it's off. It goes the exterior, main room, bedroom, mid bath, rear bath. Also anything with the arrows, it's on a dimmer switch. So you take it and hold it. And then this screen comes up so you can back it down or raise it up, just like a tablet. And that covers that. This one little icon with a battery of the X going through, that tells you all your power. There's a lot of information on here. Right now we're plugged in the 15 amp short cord. If you have 30 amp plugged in, all you have to do is go to this page and hit there. And it changes it so it allows 30 amps to go through the circuit so you can run a heater or one AC unit. If you got a 20 amp plug, plug it in there. If it comes up as a 50, it's automatically gonna pick up the 50 amp short cord and then you'll have the indication for 50. Down here is another generator start and stop button. Over here is your emergency management, self-explanatory, what's on, what's off. If there's a green light on, it's on. And you follow this box, it says it's charging, and you can invert. And then it goes to your house battery and your chassis battery. The little icon right here tells you how many amps that are going through. Down here you can disable your inverter or turn it on. If it's green, it's on. If it's gray, it's off. This is a gear. It tells you the status of everything and more setting points that you can change. Um, everything is basically set up on these off of manufactured specs. 
You can go to your inverter assist advanced. You can go in higher and turn on, which is on, or you can turn it off and you go back. Uh, these are all your settings, your low points. Uh, back to here, your emergency management load, which we just went through. Your AGS is automatic gen start. It's very, very simple. Follow the instructions. You can cancel it. You can continue on. Over here is your automatic gen starting settings. You go to easy setup. Follow the icons all the way through. Tells you how long you want stuff to run, how many minutes. Keep hitting next. And you can also enable your generator not to start at 11 o'clock or whatever, whatever the campground rules are. And then once you're done with that, you hit finish. It takes you back to this page. And that covers everything in a nutshell on that. Over here is your temperature gauge. That's your thermometer or thermostat for every room every room where there's a sensor. The rear also has a heat pump and furnace and off. We can turn that on. That turns the aqua hot on. The front has an AC and a heat pump. And I'm sorry, that's the mid has an AC and a heat pump. The front has a AC heat pump and furnace. Right now all the furnaces are on. Over here is your floor heat to turn on and off with your temperature settings. This is your aqua hot system. You can run it off a of diesel, electric, or preheat the engine. And then you can go in your aqua hot settings such as that. And it's also a self diagnostic. Um, it tells you your model number, your serial number, your system, system status, hot water. Go down to the little icons down here to your diagnosis. It'll tell you everything that's on and off, what inputs are good, what's not. Um, go here to the fault icon, it'll tell you if there's any faults, if you're having issues. Then you have your test icon, you can run through a whole complete test. And the back button takes you back to there. And then you also have floor heat in the front, same as the back. Um, power on and your temperature settings. Going to the little square boxes, these are your slide room settings just like in the beginning. Where you see a gray box on each side, you should be able to touch that icon and it'll activate something. You do have to hold the button to run the slides in and out or to go to the front slide manual override. Over here, the next one, it looks like a bunch of little lines and a string going through. That's your shade button. That's for all your power shades. Your cockpit, toll, wind, they're all labeled. If they're gray, they're up. You touch the button once, the shade goes down. Stop it, touch it again, it goes up. Um, your center ones are your master controls, so that will run everything that the little icon says, such as cockpit shade, it'll bring all three of the cockpit shades down. Then your main shades, and then your main night, your main day shades, and then your main night shades. The gear button runs all the fans for the galley, mid bath, rear bath, ceiling fan on and off in the bedroom. It also will allow you to lock and unlock your bay door, your entry door. Also on this page is the lift for the front TV on this particular model. It's on the passenger side behind the hot or behind the uh, fireplace. Okay, on this one, there's little lines that go across. This is a button you push. It does, <clears throat> tells you your time on the inside that's changeable, all your screen settings, all that stuff, diagnosis. When you hit this button, there's a little house button right here. If there's ever a red triangle flashing, that's when you go to this page, you hit diagnostics. And this goes into all your spider control systems. This is all your modules, what's your updates, all that good stuff. Um, it tells you all that. Same thing across. Now you want to go to the next switch, is switch status. Anything with a green light means the status is it is on. And then the familiar 
firmware version and the configuration reversion is all labeled. The next button here is your wireless switch status. That tells you everything that's on and what's good. It does for your key fobs, key fob one, key fob two, the door or driver seat, the passenger seat, and the bedroom. These ones control the front slides. It'll go to fault status. That's where the red triangle up here in the corner flashing. It'll flash and if there was a fault it would come up and hand you like a scan code where you could scan it with your phone and then it would give you instructions off the manual to repair or diagnose further. Then you go to your G6 house. That's all the switches on the spider control panel that are turned on right now. These are mostly all lights, all turned on. Stuff that's not turned on, it's gray. It also gives you your thermistor temperatures settings that are in here. Then you go to your G6 chassis and air cons. This is everything that's on with a chassis on the outside, the map lights, the door handle assist, all that good stuff, the road, the porch light. Um, you can go in here to your air conditioners for your front, mid, and rear. That tells you, that would tell you if it was a green light, it was on. Right now it's not. Then you go to here to your G8 module. Your G8 module goes to your outputs, uh, such as your door awning extend and retract, all the way over to your aqua hot high and low. Then you go to your inputs, that's the power coming in. Right now we have your parking brakes on, of course, with a key, and your door lock, Logic B, which is for the basement compartments, so that's turned on. Your thermistors in the bays, and then your voltage readings. Then we go over here, it says shade and RSI-11. That's all your shades that's a modules for the shade so if you hit one and it doesn't go down come on over here to this page take a look through it and see which one it is that way you can go off of your diagnosis off your manual when the red triangle comes up and it should help you further on to repair your system and that's that on the final okay over on each side of the bed there's a little black box just like this it's a switch that controls everything, the same thing on the big touchscreen does. Tiffin is very redundant, and there's multiple switches for the same operation use of a light bulb. Um, it works just like the big touchscreen. You have your home button, your light button, your battery button, your temperature, um, your shades, and your diagnostics. The only thing that these switches do not do are the slides. Right now this one's lit up. It activates as soon as you touch it. If you fan over to that one, it's black. You gotta touch it and it'll come up blue. Going back to more switches, more redundancy. Um, on this style of switch, it's little individual boxes, such as the bathroom overhead light. That's just a touch button on and off. Vanity light, same scenario. Lid light, which uh, raises up the ceiling fan lid and the fan then your water pump and then your whole complete panel lights. So instead of a touch screen, they're a push button. Okay, in the back closet is your breaker box and resettable fuse box. The bigger black box, as you open it, and you see inside are breakers, that's your 110 shore power hookups. Um, that would control lights, or I'm sorry, outlets, uh, air conditioners, anything over 12 volt power. And if they're, one of the breakers is stripped, like that, what you gotta do is go inside, look it up, just like your house. Over here is your spider control resettable breaker panel. Um, if one of these little white dots are sticking out three quarters of an inch to an inch more, push it in, reset it. Also, recommendation, take a picture of these little wordings here, blow it up, and put it on a hard drive. That tells you the operation of every fuse in there and diagnostics on the back. Okay, TV operation. 
This is an LG TV, LG remote. Press the power button. Okay, to program your air antenna TV, hit the TV button. You'll see an icon come up for the channels with no information. Now, to run a channel search, go to the home button on the remote. Um, no. Go to the arrows. Go to the home button on the remote. Use the arrow button, the icon over to the right hand corner where it says settings, the little gear. Hit OK. You'll see more icons come up. Scroll down to all settings. Hit OK. Now you'll see this icon and screen come up. Scroll down to channels. Hit OK. Go to channel tune. Hit OK. Wait for it to do its thing. Go to auto tuning. Hit OK. You'll see this little screen come up. Hit OK where it says start. And as it's going through, it's going to try to find all the local stations. This is the same operation on every LG TV. After your channel search is done, and you want to operate your Blu-ray player, you'll see a screen like this. Go to your remote, go to the little plug above the three, at your input selection. Scroll down on your arrows again to Blu-ray player, which is HDMI 1. Also, make sure your Blu-ray player is turned on. And there you go. That's easy peasy lemon squeezy. When it says optical in, that means any TV sound coming from the TV is going through the radio and playing on your surround sound. But it only operates off the main TV, which is the lift TV in the living room area. Okay, so you're done with that watching the movie. <clears throat> you want to watch satellite TV. Go to your input switch again below the TV. Scroll down to satellite selections. Hit that. And then you're going to have your screen come up such as this or if you're already programmed. This is your Joey remote, which is your Joey system. Uh, on this one, we want to go through, activate receiver from the setup. You're going to pair the remote, which is the right left hand upper corner. You would hit check, test installation check, activate receiver. This is where you would actually call and activate the DISH network receiver and you would stay on the phone with them and they go through all the settings and so on until your satellite set up. You can also download software and then the summary. Right now we're not connected so that's as far as it's going to let us go. But your remote is very very basic. You've got your power button, your DVR, your home, your guide. You can actually speak into it once it's paired to the receiver and your satellite system is activated this also has a buzzer it tells you if you lost it um, there's more settings on the side from satellite to TV to aux to input also I do believe it goes through on the screen and you can pair this remote to your TVs too so you can only use, so you only have to use one remote Turn that off at home. Okay, we are home. Now to go back to watch regular TV again, hit the TV button. And it brings you back to this screen.
which we have TV. Volume control on the left, channel on the right. On the Wally box also you have your powers, your power button, your system info, location remote. That's where you'd hit that if you lost your remote and it'd buzz at you or beep at you. Your channel up, your selector, and your channel down. When activating the Wally setup, it's once you get them on the phone and you have the TV on and you're in a good location with clear skies, it's only just a matter of a few minutes until they go through the setup and they uh, ping the satellite and everything turns on and then you can watch your satellite TV. On this particular model it has the Wally edition. Now if you have the Joey edition or the Hopper edition with the Joeys, it's a very similar box. Instead of saying Wally, it'll say Hopper. It's a little bit bigger. And with the hopper, you get little small boxes, um, which you get little small boxes to uh, install off of each TV via video or HDMI cord. And then you could run the operations. It'll go through the same settings as all of this for your Joey's on each TV, so you can individually watch something different. And also, if you have a DVR Joey, you can DVR stuff. Um, we don't have one right now to demonstrate it. Uh, we did find lots of useful information via DISH Network. At your half bath, you also have a push button switches such as the rear bath. It controls the overhead light, the fan, the lid, the water pump, and the panels. It's the same switch as up there. Okay, at your kitchen sink, once again, you have more redundant switches. It's the same switch that operates off the big panel, it's just more convenience. Uh, it's the same switch style as in the bath, both bathrooms. You have your, or your main ceiling light, your passenger side ceiling light, your driver side ceiling light, your task light, your fan lid. On this particular switch it has a shade switch that operates the galley shade up and down. You have your front access lights your water pump, and your vent lid switch. Okay, here's your residential fridge. Open up the door, there's a filter. In this particular model, it's not set up yet. The filter is encased here. It goes up into this little half moon thing. There's a tab. Pull the tab towards you. Put your thumb on the top, push down, and it releases it. There is a plug in here. If you live in cold climates, don't lose the plug because you need that for winterization. Quarter turn, spots right out at you, set it down, install your filter. If you're going to change a filter after usage, same scenario. Push down, pull down, pull out, quarter turn, pop it out, pop the new one in. Now to reinstall the plug, put it in your hand, push it up, push it in, and quarter turn clockwise. Then you're all set. Push that back up. Okay, once your water filters in and you run water through the whole system, this is your ice maker and water dispenser. Uh, just put your glass up. If you want it on water, press water. If you want ice, you press ice. Make sure the refrigerator is cold and you have ice in it and it'll dis dispense ice. Um, you have multiple little buttons up here. This is for your light high on or high and low, your humidity control, your power cold, which if you press that, it'll force the freezer to work faster and stronger, your temperature alarm, your filter reset alarm, so when your filter's bad, it'll flash or turn green a green light on you, then change your filter. Um, you have your control locks where you hold the button for two seconds and it locks the controls so if you have little kids that can't stick their hand underneath it and get covered in water all over the floor and if this button over here if you're storing it for a long time press and hold this button for three seconds three to five seconds and it shuts the power off to it now on the inside of the drawer is your ice maker Wiggle that out, that's your ice maker tray. There is also a switch on the ice maker itself, on and off. 
if that's off it will not produce ice you would have to turn it on and then wait the appropriate amount of time to make ice cubes the dinette table it retracts or extends out and retracts all the way in this is all the way in to extend it two hands give it a nice little tug and then it extends out so you can have four seatings all the way around over here is another switch panel it's the same as the rear bathrooms and over at the galley just different settings there are a touch screen for your lights they also have little arrows on them so you hold the button and it will dim or extend the light uh, starting from the top you have driver's side ceiling lights passenger side ceiling lights driver's side shade lights or driver's side shades lights reading lights the passenger side reading lights the sconce lights front sconce lights or front crystal lights which are on the floor over here you have your galley shade up and down and your living room shade up and down your nightshade master so that would control all the nightshades to go down or up and this one that says TV lift that raises and lowers the TV uh, good recommendation don't drive down the road with the TV up here's your fireplace it's an electric fireplace to produce visual and heat um, on this particular model it has touch button switches right on the top starting from right or actually starting from left oh, LA. okay starting from left to right the first button is your power on and off as you can see and it indicates a flame and there's heat coming out of the top the next one is a temperature setting and you'll have a little indication over here that just went out for flame and time you can change settings for temperatures and time um, this particular model does have a remote and it controls the same settings the power on and off heat up and down and temperature Right here you have your electric induction cooktop. Um, Tiffin always sends the pots and pans to go along with it. They will only work with this style flat bottom and a circular due to the settings. You would set that on there and then you can go through your settings and turn power on, power on and your temperature gauges are at the top. And as you can, I don't know if you can hear that or not, but it's actually already warming up. And as soon as you pull the pot off, it shuts right down. Here you have your convection slash microwave oven. Um, comes with all kinds of little settings of what you should suggested to cook rates at for convection and for microwaving. Um, it also has a timer, um, a kitchen timer. So you can time stuff the fan high and low and it also has a light button on the bottom self-explanatory button in and out when microwaving don't leave the metal in there because it will arc small arcs across when convecting you can use the steel racket okay what you have here is your power theater seating front button extends the bottom and tips back fully extends the back button raises your back head up and neck up and lowers down to re that's to fully extend each part to retract it you hit the same front button on the back side push it back and it brings it all the way back in that control is the same on each side of the seat Okay, the front TV, the side TV, the outdoor TV all operate off the same LG remote. If you're going to watch a Blu-ray or a DVD disc, 
you would insert it in the Blu-ray player, come up and hit the input button below the TV, and you can operate that by scrolling down, you hit Blu-ray player. Now you could watch a Blu-ray player here, a TV, regular air TV in a bedroom, satellite off the outside TV, and off the, li the power lift TV. Um, all the operations are the same as in for inputs and controls that we went through off the back TV. Um, you can also watch a sat the satellite and Blu-ray player or sig send signals and play off of every TV. And this controller here, this controls your solar powered panels. The solar power panel works as it takes sunlight to the solar panel, runs it down to the battery, and back up into this controller. This controller basically does everything for your solar panels. It'll tell you what your readings are on each panel, standby, so on. This little button with the three dashes is your menu gate menu button press that and you can select your uh, settings via up and down buttons hit the menu again it'll tell you how many max amps this particular one is set up for a max of 30 amps for charging purposes it, uh, you go through the settings on the third press in it tells you the battery type which is a wet cell you can change that if you change your batteries uh, recommendation is leave it set up the way it comes on your delivery for a wet battery all you should actually have to do is when you're in direct sunlight or good sunlight turn it on and you'll see the voltage here here and then you'll see amperage coming through um, being we're inside of a building right now we can't get that and it'll tell you the wattage um, if you're playing around with it you can change it by going into menu selections and the manual at hand you can change stuff to whatever your likings are on that uh, recommendation is though is you should be able to just turn it on and it'll take sunlight through the solar panels and charge the batteries. And right here you have your triple vision switch. This takes this is your TV antenna booster to cable. If you're hooked up to cable, all you get and you're not watching an antenna TV, hit that button and then the red light indicates what it's on. Um, if your campsite doesn't have cable, keep it on that. This particular switch is for your Wineguard satellite system. This is your power on and power off. That turns power on to the satellite dish on the roof so it could circle and find a satellite so you could operate your TV off room. Patio on and controls. It comes with a remote and it also has a hardware switch right up here. The settings are exactly the same setups. On this particular one, we'll go off the remote. You have your light switch on. That turns your LED light strip on. It has a lock button that locks the awning in place for travel purposes. You have an unlock button to unlock it. On the right hand side, you have three controls. One controls the awning in, the other one controls stop and out. So you can run your awning part of the way out and stop it and then retract it back in. This control does the same thing in the same setup. Operating your leveling jacks via air or hydraulic, you're going to want to turn the key on and start the coach. Once the coach is running, it takes you to your home screen. To level, you want to go to leveling and you want to select either air or jacks. We'll start off with the air. You press the air button, you make sure it comes up with a eye looking levels with little gauges in between. I'll tell you if it's good or not. On this particular one, you can hit auto. You can either raise all or lower all. This one will raise. And it'll go through its whole function. 
after hitting auto button, the auto button, it's all leveled now. You can go back to lower and it'll lower it. When hitting auto level and you're good, or when it's thinking, going through its procedures, this light will flash and it'll come up and all your gauges will be in the center. Now to go man or not manual, to go hydraulic, go back, go to leveling. You want to go jacks, make sure vehicle's on and running, hit auto. It's going to drop the airbags and then indicate the jacks to raise the hydraulics up. And once again, it's flashing, the air is leaving the system, and we're lowering the coach. And now the hydraulic jacks are going through their cycle. Jack comes down, alarm comes on so you can't drive away. As it's doing its thing, to pick and choose what you want to use for auto leveling, if you're staying an overnighter and you're on gravel or a, a pad, always make sure to see how level you are. If you're level, you can use airbags. If you're out of sequence, like one side's higher than the other, you can use your hydraulics jacks such as what we're doing right now. Um, you can also use boards to go underneath the jack feet or plastic blocks. Uh, that'll help if you're in a really, really accessed site or angled access site. Okay, to auto retract the jacks, go back to your home page. Go to travel, hit the travel button, and it will automatically raise the jacks, the hydraulic jacks up. Now, being that we lower or raise, use the hydraulic jacks to level the unit, it's going to come across. It says not at ride height. Once the coach is running, you can touch the high ride or the low ride that actuates the airbags to fill up or lower to get your ride height correctly okay if the ground is soft where you're camping and your unit is level according to the gauge on here if you're doing an overnight trip or an overnight stay you can use the airbags to level it all out but for an extended stay you'd want to use the hydraulic jacks and if the ground's soft, once again, put blocking underneath so that it doesn't sink into the ground, and that'll hold the unit level. Lights flashing, it says not at right height, you would start your engine of your coach and hit either high or low, and it will inflate the airbags to whatever settings that you want. Um, the other settings on here, you can hit your home screen, you got your travel, your leveling, you hit more. You hit the touch screen, the color, the backlighting. Help faults systems. The faults will tell you if something's not operating correctly. The system goes through the whole setups and restarts and status and information. Okay, this knob controls all your settings on your dash to change stuff. You can scroll right or left. Um, you turn, it's actually a push button on the top and a turn knob, turn knob on the bottom. Um, you can control, go through and see everything it controls, your inverter status, um, all the goodies, engine load, trans temperature, depth temperature. You, if you side click the black knob to the left, it tells you your odometer for your trip meter speedometer 
by depressing the black button on the right hand screen of your tachometer it brings you to this setting you can go to pre-drive your brightness all your settings if we click on that it tells you color needed diagnostics time graphic schemes, backlighting, units, sound, and your compass setup. And you follow the instructions as pushing down on the compass setup, calibrate, decline back. Now you can to get to the back button you're pressing the, the back you're pressing the black button down on the knob now that we're at settings you can rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise to take you into different modes of the screen okay all your rocker switches here this controls the air horn on and off um, this one here is your driver solar shade which raises that up and down. This one here is for your engine brake. This is to be used going up and down hills so you don't rely so much on the chassis brakes. Um, you have a high, off, and low. That's the driver's nightshade that will lower down. This button here is for your wind power window. This is your transmission selector for your transmission. You have your R, your neutral, your drive, and your mode switch, and your up and down arrows. You can go through once you're driving if it's a hilly country, go into mode and be able to lock the transmission to a certain gear so it doesn't over rev. This red button right here is your heated mirrors on off. This button with the L and R are your with the rocker switch in the center is your mirror control up down right left um, to operate each mirror you gotta actually take the selector and push it to L or R this here is your parking brake lever push in push in to release pull out to uh, engage headlight switch so you can turn your parking lights on, your headlights on, pull out for your fog lights. This here is your dimmer switch for your dash lights. This is your engine preheat switch. Um, when on, it indicates on the bottom on the orange light. This is your aux start switch. So if your chassis batteries are dead and your house batteries are fully charged, you could press that button down and it's going to send voltage from the house batteries to the chassis batteries to start your coach. This here is your mobile eye. It tells you if you're speeding, not in your lane, um, pushing one side to the other, uh, how far away you are from a vehicle in front of you. It's a safe, nice safety feature. Okay, this button here on the dash is a safety feature to turn on and off the headlights when driving down the throughway to allow somebody to cut in front of you or pass in front of you. That switch used to be on the older models on the side console. This is for your, your on and off switch here is for your cruise control, your set, your resume, your cancel. It has two little triggers on each side. That controls the radio power on and off and different functions. It also controls into the camera. And the top button also turns the power on and off. Alright, here's your windshield wiper control. Your off's in the center, your squirters are in the set this side and your speed controls right here. Yeah, your two toggle switches on the bottom. The bottom one controls the channels. 
The top one controls the volume. And then you have your radio with all your touch button screens right here. Um, it also has the volume knob. Uh, you can go into menu and select anything on here. Your navigation setups. Follow the labels agree. You can go to your cameras. That's your rear camera facing on each side. Your side view. Your right view. And when those cameras trigger, it's on both screens. Um, on this switch setup, you have your step cover, goes in and out, your driver's fan, high, low, your dash accent lights, on, off, your solar shade, which brings the front shade down, your nightshade, which brings the nightshade down to raise up, press up, press up on that one. Your gen start stop button. When running the generator, always hit the stop button first for a few seconds. That way the, the fuel pump primes the generator. And then you would be able to hit start and it fire up. Your map light over the driver's side. Your docking light switch is on the outside. And this is a radio camera standby switch. So if you're hooked up to shore power, you can have that. If you don't want the screens lit up, press that down, screen goes away. Now you want it on, it'll go through its cycle. There we got the camera on with no key in the ignition and the radio going. Okay, this is a, a controller for all your GPS systems and your cameras. Um, you can go through down to allow the passenger to control all the navigation settings. Um, you have your power button, your CRS button, your DIM button, your nav button, button and your camera button. Uh, the camera button actually indicates for side view, left and right, and rear. Then you have your volume buttons up and down. Okay, with this on and the navigation here, if you need a bigger line of sight, hit the navigation button here and it tells you the map so the driver can see it and the co-pilot. Over here we have another touch screen pad. There's also one up front. They operate just like all the ones in the bedroom and the main one other than it does not run the slides. Um, you have your home buttons, all that good stuff. Home, lighting, battery, temperature, lock, and diagnostics. This round disc is a cell phone charger. It's a magnetic base so you'd be able to set your cell phone on there and it automatically charge through that. Okay now we're gonna go through the steps of closing the slides. Let's so again start your coach. Walk back here to this panel. The big touch screen. Hit the slides. Now what you're going to do is hit retract. Okay, now we're going to close the front slides on both sides. Also, make sure your seats are all the way forward. The levers for this, or the buttons for the seats are on the sides. Try retract button. And it'll hydraulically bring the front two slides in. That was it for the 2020 40IP Allegro Brush Show Through. Thanks for watching.